Over the years, I met many INFJs that say adamantly that they have chosen singlehood. They have chosen to stay single. They have chosen not to date. They have chosen not to have a partner. Today we're talking about that. Why do some INFJs choose singlehood? Are they afraid of attachment? Are they afraid of commitment? What is it that drives an INFJ to seek singlehood? Beyond that, can you be happy as an INFJ without a partner? Why and how can an INFJ find happiness without a relationship or in a relationship? The obvious question we have to ask ourselves first of all is, do INFJs fear commitment? Is that the reason why INFJs choose singlehood? Are they just immature and irresponsible? I would like to contrast that view and I would like to say that INFJs are hyper responsible and hyper committed. INFJs are overly responsible and find themselves drawn to far more responsibility than what they can reasonably carry. In relationships, INFJs tend to uh, take on most of the emotional responsibility in the relationship. That means the INFJ feels emotionally responsible for the well-being and happiness of their partner. And as we know, it is impossible to live without pain and sadness and anxiety and anger and all those human emotions. But the INFJ is and often becomes the position of blame and the position of uh, fault when it comes to those matters. It is the INFJ's fault, at least in the INFJ's worldview, if their partner is not happy or is not satisfied. It is the INFJ's fault if they themselves are not happy or not satisfied. INFJs do not fear commitment. They, in fact, they are overcommitted. <laughs> and so the explanation must be something else. And one misconception I see here is that INFJs are bad at relationships. Sometimes when you watch videos on INFJs and read articles about INFJs, you read about INFJ door slam, you read about INFJs shutting people out, struggling to communicate their emotions. You get the picture that INFJs must be terrible at emotions and relationships. Wow, this type must be really bad at these things. And that's a really strange assumption. Uh, with the personality type that spends so much time on introspection. INFJs are one of the personality types most interested in psychology and one of the personality types that are most drawn to understand people and themselves. INFJs and almost all INFJs I meet and have met and encountered in the real world have been aware of personality psychology or of psychology and have studied it or have had a big interest in it. And with all of these things comes the question, uh, are INFJs really that bad at relationships? Are INFJs really that bad at communicating? I think instead what we have to understand is the standards through which INFJs communicate and act in relationships are different than the ones we are used to. We are used to a partner yelling at us and screaming and shouting and throwing things at the wall. We're not used to a partner like an INFJ who speaks to us softly and who looks us in the eyes while they explain themselves and their boundaries. We're not used to a person that uh, is so soft-spoken and so modest in asserting themselves and their values and who they are and so free and so tolerant and so allowing. Yeah, the INFJ tends to give their partner freedom to make their own decisions. Uh, and the chance to act and do things their own way. The INFJ provides a non-judgmental space, a space where people can be themselves. And the INFJ, beyond that, provides an understanding and accepting space, a space where you can feel understood and listened to and heard. What I see on the other hand, from the other perspective, is a lot of people struggle to give the INFJ that same space in return. Because the INFJ does not scream and shout and throw things at the wall, the INFJ is not taken seriously because the INFJ does not issue judgment or um, does not uh, judge you for what you do or what you act like. Uh, that assumes the question, then I don't have any responsibility, then I can do whatever I want. And <laughs> so um, the INFJ is often at fault of, uh, well, being the one that is bad at relationships when really the question is maybe the INFJ is just different in relationships.
I think INFJs are a partner that takes on getting used to. And I want to talk about another question that can come up. Uh, because sometimes what I hear is people ask, are INFJs even capable of love? INFJs tend to be uh, universal humanitarians. You, INFJs uh, tend to start out by liking everyone. INFJs tend to have a positive regard in humanity, believing and seeing the best in everyone. And the question is, can a person that likes everyone love someone? Can an INFJ hold one person above the rest of the world? Can an INFJ balance the equation of monogamy and of uh, putting yourself and everything into one person while at the same time recognizing that everyone is important and everyone has value and everyone is and deserves to be seen and heard and understood. There's another question here and that is just about attachment and that is um, a lot of the time what I see painted is a picture of an INFJ that through extroverted feeling uh, shows generosity and care towards their partner while on the inside being cold, detached, and uncaring. Yeah, people seem to labor with the idea of the INFJ as the good Samaritan uh, and the cold, careless, and selfish, apathetic. And these two are mutually impossible narratives. You cannot say that the INFJ is both of these things at the same time. What you have to understand is, uh, this is more shaped by your perception of the INFJ than what the INFJ really is. The INFJ is and is capable of detaching and of looking at a situation logically and analyzing a situation through reason, but that does not mean that the INFJ is detached or analytical or logical. Being capable of doing something and being something are two very, very different things. Any type is capable of doing these things and all types should try to do these things. However, being able to approach your emotions from a detached point of view does not erase the fact that you have emotions. The emotions are still there no matter how you choose to present them. So people can really struggle with the idea of a person that deals with their emotions in a logical manner, a person that looks at and reviews their behavior and actions for congruency and accuracy. and People can assume that such a person has no emotions and has no feelings and has no love, but the love is still there. And all you have to do to know if an INFJ loves you is just ask, do you love me? And those questions, you know, <laughs> most importantly, you have to look at your partner and understand, is this a feeling person? Is this a person of emotion? Yes. And if they are, it does not matter how they choose to relate to and handle and process those things. The emotions are still there. That's the most important thing. As an INFJ, something I've had to make peace with is that I can understand everyone, but that doesn't mean that I love everyone. And just because I can understand everyone does not mean that everyone is my responsibility. Just because I like everyone does not mean that I have to agree with everyone or have to think the way other people do. And understanding that is a massive shift for me because uh, it has helped me prioritize and understand that this is that person's path. It's not my path and it's not my responsibility. And I think that's a very important thing to remember. You are not responsible for everyone's path. You're not responsible for everyone's journey. I want to get into the real questions. And those are, do INFJs fear being used? Do INFJs experience or have they experienced being used? Almost every single line of J I've talked to has had experiences with being used in relationships. And it just ties on to other things I've talked about, about INFJs being bad in relationships. 
INFJs do communicate boundaries. Most of the time the INFJ will let you know if they are stressed or tired or will tell you what they want. They will tell you where they want to go, they will tell you how they feel and they will tell you what's going on through their head. However, many INFJs do not feel listened to and do not feel like their boundaries are accepted. And when an INFJ has their boundaries questioned or argued, when people start uh, picking apart the INFJ's motivations and boundaries or start uh, uh, freely uh, exceeding and crossing those boundaries, the INFJ is hurt. And often the INFJ will voice and say, I feel hurt or I feel misunderstood. And you'll see that the INFJ doesn't feel good. You'll see that the INFJ becomes quieter and quieter. You'll see that they retreat more into themselves. You'll see that they stop sharing with you. You'll see that they don't feel welcome or accepted by you. And you'll notice a different kind of INFJ. So if you notice that your partner is becoming cold or becoming quiet or becoming apathetic, or if they're not the sparkly, energetic, or positive or optimistic person they first were when you met them, the question is, okay, what was it that uh, made them lose that? What was it that happened to change that? And uh, if that's the case, that you really need to have a talk with each other is about the boundaries that you have and what you can do to make sure that the other person gets their energy back again. Because INFJs can cross boundaries for other people and INFJs are boundary crossing personality types. Yeah, INFJs are natural boundary crossers. They are meant to exist beyond the boundaries of all the 16 personality types. INFJs can work with any personality type, can share the experiences and the feelings of any other personality type as if they were that type. INFJs have the capacity to transform themselves and put themselves in the other person's perspective. And so when INFJ meets another person, the INFJ can naturally mirror the other person's way of talking, speaking, and thinking. And the INFJ can do this without any problem. However, there is an energy cost here. And if an INFJ has to do this or becomes constrained to this role or uh, to fill this role for another person for too long, that can become very draining. So you have to get an INFJ to uh, be able to switch between and shape shift between going into and being your mirror but also going back and being themselves being their authentic version of themselves the infj must be allowed to cross between the different boundaries of the different types but also must be allowed the freedom to cross into the boundaries of any personal type the infj should never feel conformed to or constrained to one specific set role Another question is, do INFJs have time for relationships? What I've seen is INFJs are very proactive personality types. That means INFJs tend to be um, captured by causes and by uh, missions and by ideology. INFJs are ambassadors of ideas or of a idea. And INFJs tend to devote most of their time to that idea or that humanitarian cause or that mission. And INFJs can become completely lost in that mission. Yeah, INFJs can find themselves putting every single waking hour into that cause. And so the question is, can the INFJ fit another person into that lifestyle? The INFJ's lifestyle is a full-time lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle that is, uh, yeah... Uh, tricky to balance if the INFJ has to compromise that lifestyle for the sake of a partner, has to uh, give up on that cause or down prioritize that cause for another person that can cause difficulty. So uh, ideally, the INFJ can find somebody that will walk with and be a part of that cause, or at least a person that will not be in the way of it, the person that will give the INFJ the freedom to pursue their ideas and what they are most passionate about, and will give the INFJ the space and room to do those things. Yeah, either find a partner that will walk with you and share that cause, or find an INFJ, another person that will I give you the space and freedom to do those things. And recognize that it is absolutely central to your idea and to your cause and to your mission that you take care of yourself. By making yourself happy, by making yourself feel good, by making yourself feel uh, and your needs feel met, 
you can be a better representative of those ideas. If you are tired, if you are exhausted, if you're angry, if you're frustrated, if you're stressed while advocating your idea and while trying to bring about your vision, your vision is going to become one of anger, one of tension, one of stress, one of fear, one of pain, one of exhaustion. And so try to become the best representative possible for your ideas and be that uh, representative by surrounding yourself by things that give you energy, love, passion, and care. Things that make you feel good, things that make you feel happy, things that put you in a good state of mind. And perhaps a relationship can be that, or perhaps there is another way, another thing you can put yourself into, or something else that can give you energy, joy, happiness, and all those things that are important to every single person on earth. Another question is, do INFJs believe in attachment? Do INFJs even believe in attachment? What I've seen is INFJs do not tend to be jealous types. INFJs do not tend to have a strong concept of attachment. What I've found for myself is I tend to struggle with the idea of permanence or of uh, wanting something from another person. I don't want to want anything from another person. I don't want to need anything from another person. I don't want to force or push anything from anyone. I want everyone to have the freedom to be their best version of themselves and to be fully happy. And so I find myself struggling with the idea of attachment in the first place. I cannot or do not want to feel like I possess or own a potential partner or that they are mine or that I should uh, try to uh, force or enslave them or uh, constrain them to fit my needs. Ideally, they should just naturally be able to fill those needs in the first place. Or another way of thinking about it, I have this quote I really like. I love you because I love you, not because I need you. And I like that view and it's just a sense of, oh, I, I just love you because I love you. And I know a lot of INFJs, most INFJs don't believe in um, 